morning, everyone. Drive to School Podcast, Pastor Goodman, Pastor Brademeyer. How you doing? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing awesome. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we're, we're talking about why it matters to think. Uh, we have a word for that called philosophy, and we're going to start to dive into that today, right? Yeah, I think that's the plan. All right, so I'm just going to turn it over. How Teach me how to think. Well, <laughs> well, I think before we, we start talking about thinking per se, because there's actually a discipline in philosophy that looks at that called logic. I think we need to take a step back. You know, when we, when we get to philosophy, we first have to get at reality, what things are, right? And that's a field uh, of study called metaphysics. And, and that's a, I think this is hilarious. There's a lot of funny things through history, but physics, right? We all have heard of that. If you've been in high school long enough, you probably had a class on physics. And what do you do? You look at forces, you look at basic things that function in nature, right? So you study gravity, you study, you know, the laws of thermodynamics, this kind of stuff. And you use mathematics to describe that. Well, metaphysics asks questions like, well, why does math actually describe the form and shape of the universe? Well, how do we know that the scientific method is valid, right? Why do things exist at all rather than not exist, right? Is there a difference between existence and being? And that, that gets a little trippy, but that's a big deal when we start talking about God, right? Because God makes things that exist, so is it fair to say that God exists? And then, of course, for Christians, this all blows up because we have Jesus. And, of course, we can say of Jesus that he is, right? He has being because he's, you know, God, but he also exists because he becomes a man, right? So he's actually in existence with us. And, and anyways, that, that gets really, really trippy really quickly. But No, I, I can see actually how this, this matters because this is, in a lot of ways, this is everybody trying to run before they're walking. And so is metaphysics sort of like the asking questions about walking? And, right. and that matters because if you're making the wrong assumptions about what's real, I can see how things would go south pretty quick from there, right? Right, right. Because when, you know, because it's a big thing now you hear, you know, like, like my local public school, they have a, a, a like five things that they say are their core, you know, focuses, right? And one of them is critical thinking. Well, that's great. We need to think critically. That's what logic teaches us to do. But before we start asking, you know, uh, how we think, we have to ask what thinking is, right? Mm -hmm. what, what does it mean to think critically? And, uh, you know, uh, the school and I have very different conceptions of what critical thinking actually is. We're not, we're not talking about the same thing when we talk about that. But what that's a conversation, I think, better, more for when we get to logic than, okay. than necessarily for today. But so, you know, metaphysics deals with questions of being. This is where cosmology comes in, the origins of the universe. Right. One of the things that you hear all the time is that, you know, evolutionary theory is a scientific theory. It's not. It's an empirically derived philosophy. Right. It has some empirical evidence, but it's philosophical in its origins because it cannot be. And the way we use the word science today is, is reductive. Right. When we say science today, we mean things that can be observed and tested. Well, by definition, evolution cannot be observed and tested. It doesn't necessarily mean it is or is not a real thing. Right. Um, that's a conversation in a different realm, but it does point out that it's actually a philosophical question, right? Not a, not a scientific one in the strict sense, you know? Um, so, you know, in, in the medieval world, they use the word science to describe all of this, which is where the confusion comes from. But today we, we kind of divide that out a little bit. And we pull this might be kind of a, a going forward, going backward thing then. So um, I'm to try to break this down and help me if I'm wrong. Uh, but when we talk about this, then, uh, for example, with evolution, it's, it's, you're saying that we're sort of coming to a belief and then trying to, to backfill it sort of uh, right. instead of uh, actually looking at this and saying, what did things actually look like so that my beliefs can be formed by it? Right. Well, this is this is oh boy, we keep talking about logic here, but this is one of the differences between logic and modern empirical scientific method. Right. Science looks at a thing. So, you, you know, say you have an apple, you, you walk down the street, and you find an apple laying on the ground. It's the first apple you've ever seen in your life. It's green. It's beautiful. Um, you pick it up, you observe it, right? This is science, you know, the way we do it now. So I pick up my green apple and I'm looking at it and it, it's pleasing to my eye. It's nice and symmetrical. It appears to be some kind of a fruit. Um, I decide to take a risk and take a little bite out of it. And it's a little bit sour, you know, because it's green. And, and I start looking at well, where did this come from? Did it fall off the back of a truck? Did it fall from a bush beside the road? And so you start making guesses. And and if you look around, you realize, oh, there's a tree right next to the road that's got all these other green apples on it. Therefore, I deduce that the apple fell from this tree and it is in fact a fruit of a tree. That is, uh -huh. you know, deductive logic. I start with the solution and I work backward to the likely cause, but there's a problem with that. So using deduction, you'll say, I've seen all these apples, they're all green, therefore apples are green. And you're gonna feel like a complete idiot the first time you go to the grocery store and all the apples are red, okay. right? So deduction doesn't give certitude. It does make things that work. My laptop here that I'm recording with you on is is works because we, you know, deduced how electrons move through silicon boards with little, you know, wires in them and that sort of thing, right? Um, but philosophy and logic works differently. It takes 
certain presuppositions, you know, this thing and that thing, you put them together to get this other thing by necessity, right? And so when we have logic, we always work for certitude, absolute, you know, truth, not uh, relative truth or probable truth. Um, but, you know, back to metaphysics, right? So we're asking basic questions about like, why is the universe? You know, why do, why do we have a universe? You know, this is one of the things that's fascinating because you go and you talk to an atheist and they'll go, well, we, we have the Big Bang. Okay, great. Why? But why? I mean, where did this come from? You know, we oh, know. Man, from, we never even think to question this stuff. Right. I mean, you know, because if you look at, you know, Big Bang Theory, right? So you have this infinitely ordered, perfectly dense little ball of matter that was probably about the size of a period on a size 12 times new Roman font. That's all the matter of the universe compressed into that. And then for one day, it just it just blew up. Which is completely, it doesn't, you know, there's, there's, a, this is a strange thing because the only way this could exist at all for even an instant was to be perfectly ordered. And so how does a perfect order become imperfect and then cause all of this other stuff to come out of it? You know, so, so there's a foundational flaw in this theory, but if you don't ask you know, metaphysical questions about why you're not actually going to look into that, you're just going to take it for granted because some guy in a coat says, you know, Hey, this is the, this is the thing, you know, <laughs> This, if you follow the James Webb uh, telescope stuff, they're finding some interesting stuff when they're looking at the background of the universe and they're, you know, looking at red and blue shift about whether this, you know, stars are not moving the way we thought they should be moving. And it's actually calling into question the theory of expansion of the universe, which is really causing some, some interesting discussions right now amongst physicists and astrophysicists from what I understand. So, but anyway, so this is what metaphysics does. It asks things like, why do we have stuff that is? You know, so here, here's an example, a logical problem for you. All right. So, Pastor Goodman, you do not exist because you decided to exist, right? Okay. You, you, you don't, right. do you? I'm not here because right. I chose yeah, yeah, too. Yeah. 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 You're, you're what we call a contingent being, right? You have existence from somewhere else. Your mom and dad. The reason you exist right. is because you have a mom and a dad, right? And where did they come from? Their moms and dads. Right. And, and we can do this for a long, long time. Yeah. Okay, so how far back can we go with that? Well, we can go back to as far back as your family has genealogical records. And then we can make an educated guess that there are people around before that, right? Um, so here's a question for you. If everything gets its origin from somewhere else, and we know from empirical observation that there appears to have been a definite start to the universe, why does anything exist at all? Because if everything exists from somewhere, then there should be nothing at all if there's a definite start to the universe, right? You just wrinkled this my brain a, a little bit, but I follow you. Yeah. Yeah. But this is, this is a serious problem, right? And so right. this is why when you get into, you know, science, you know, this is why like, if you've heard of string theory, which mm -hmm. is, it's just, uh, you know, this, this idea that's been come out, it helps balance some equations that there's all these unobservable dimensions. And then there's this idea that there's other universes, multiverse, all this kind of stuff, because the only way that our universe can exist, if we try to explain it scientifically is to appeal to other universes that predate ours or exist outside of ours which is fascinating because by definition, we can't actually interact or observe with them, right? We, we, we can't deal with them at all. And so it's really kind of just kicking the can down the road. So you, you know, can try to come up with something to explain it. Now, what they're getting at is that there has to be a different kind of being, right? Either you have something called an infinite regression where stuff just goes on forever, which doesn't match any of our experience or observation, or there has to be something else out there that exists of its own accord, right? So to speak, that, that is because it is. We would say that's God, right? Mm -hmm. God is essential, right? He exists because he exists. Uh, we don't. And so, um, you know, these, this is the sort of stuff metaphysics looks at. And, that's uh, brilliant. And, and I mean, because it, it makes mockery of, of the idea uh, that, that we just sort of, yeah, like, like popped up apart from a, a creator, that there, there's not an unmoved mover. Um, but it, it's, it's also in a big way, a place of joy uh, it, to, to sort of cling to the idea that there is no why behind what is it. it it's sort of a depressing thing. Like it just is. Don't right. think about it. There's no love here. There's no joy here. There's no. Well, and this, and this gets actually gets into ethics, which is another discipline. You see, the problem with these disciplines, philosophers like to categorize and organize stuff. But in the real yeah. world, they don't stay in their silos. You know, sure. so when we talk about metaphysics, we also have to talk about logic. We also have to talk about epistemology, which is how we figure out how things are. We also have to talk about ethics which is the morality of things. And this is one of the assumptions of Christians up until, you know, relatively recently that there is a moral dimension to all of existence. Everything has a purpose, right? Um, um, there's a Greek word for this, right? Telos, the end. When Jesus says on the cross, it is finished, he's saying telos, which is from the same root, right? It's, it's about things having a purpose and a completion. And for us Christians, that, that completion is ultimately in Christ. 
Like everything goes to Jesus, you know, it all builds off him. And, and, you know, think about your, your average non-Christian, you know, sort of maybe spiritual, maybe not spiritual American person. So why do we want to deal with the world around us? Well, there's no purpose for it. And so it becomes something that I impose on it. It becomes something that I take and do with it. So what is the purpose of the tree? Well, the tree only has purpose if I assign purpose to it, right? For, for the classical Christian, you know, philosopher, or theologian, the tree has purpose because God designed it to, you know, produce oxygen and take in carbon dioxide to provide shade and food for birds or maybe fruit or wood to build things with or whatever. It has all these functions and purposes. And, and ultimately, it gives glory to God by its beauty and its, its, its um, fulfilling of the purposes that God had made it for. Brilliant. That's, and that's huge. Um, these, these are sort of the underlying assumptions that, that are going to start to define everything else. Uh, yeah, this is, this is already enough to think about. You, my brain's all wrinkly now. Uh, so <laughs> let's pick up more next time. What do you think? I think that'd be all right. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for joining us again, Pastor Bredemeyer. Yeah, I'm glad to be here. Have a good one. Yep, you too.